Good morning, everyone. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, I don't see how the donate button is. That's not great. Oh. Any ideas? I can't find the donate button. Oh, is it? Is it live? It is. Uh oh. <laughs> Nope. Hey everybody. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to add our donate button. And there's no sound apparently. Oh, having some issues today. Can we get some comments here just to see if anyone can hear us? having a couple issues there we go oh Stacy thank you so much for that comment that makes me feel better so you guys can hear me hopefully and you can comment awesome wait for a few more people to tune in oh thank you Melody all right well if you can hear me and see me fantastic welcome back to the Buttonwood Park Zoo here in sunny ish New Bedford Massachusetts hi everybody all right, so if you have been here before, you might know what building, and if you've been tuning in the last couple of days, you probably recognize this building anyway. So can anybody guess what animal we're gonna be seeing here in our lovely rainforest rivers and reefs building? We got some, some hints maybe here, I don't know. It's gonna go in a nice circle, who can tell? I'm not gonna go any further because that would give it away. All right, here are your hints for today's animal. Our first hint is that this animal actually has another animal's name in its name. That's hint number one. All right, hint number two for today's animal is that it has a really, really extreme parenting strategy. So extreme actually that we're gonna be studying it if you tune in for our virtual spring zoo cruise. So if you've got a little one between the ages of six and 10 or a little younger, a little more, um, then you will actually be learning about this very ad. So make sure you come back between April 20th and April 24th if you want to attend virtual Spring Zoo Crew for extreme parents. All right, our last hint. Hmm, what do we think? This last hint, it's got a very strange looking face. Hi, Logan, age eight. All right, it's got a strange looking face that it uses to eat underwater. All right, if you're guessing one of our tanks, you are absolutely right. We're tuning in today for another fantastic, spectacular fish talk with our good buddy, <laughs> Zookeeper Kyle, who loves my puns so very much. Let's tune in to Kyle. Uh, yeah, Welcome back. Today. So we actually did just feed the seahorses, so they're moving around, they're pretty active right now, and we have 14 seahorses in this tank right now. So up here, at the tippity tippity top, you guys can actually see three of our female seahorses. And then down here, if you come down, we're moving our way down, right on this rope. Yeah, this one. That one right there, that's actually a male. So like Sarah said, those are the extreme parents right there. Those are the ones that actually have the babies, and if you actually can see his pouch it's a little bit kind of bulgy he actually might have some eggs in there as it stands right now so like i said these guys are our line seahorses and they are native to massachusetts they're from right around here um they're not super duper common in massachusetts but they do pop up sometimes in the summer but you do mostly find them along the entire Western Atlantic. So for you guys who aren't super familiar with geography, that would be from Massachusetts all the way down to about Southern Brazil. So these guys have a very, very large range for such a small little fish. The seahorses are fish, believe it or not. They're a fun, cool little fish. So Sarah's actually zoomed in. I wanted to show you guys something real quick. That one is the male. So if you look, like I said before, you look underneath where his belly kind of is, you see that kind of dark, fleshy, smooth looking pouch. And if you come up over here, 
You see how these guys don't have that pouch where the belly just kind of cuts in real quick and it goes directly to the tail? That's how you can tell a male from a female seahorse. So the dads, the boys, have the pouches that hold the eggs while the girls do not. All right, now we have our first question. Thank you, do they have fins, asks Carrie. They do have fins. So seahorses, just like every other fish, has fins. So whenever you're looking at a fish, they all have about the same kind of fins. They're just in different spots. So those fins that would be on the side of a fish, the ones that you kind of see moving very gently, are called pectoral fins. And if you look at the seahorse, he's actually giving you a good show right above near his head. He's flapping those fins real, real quick. That would be those same fins that are right on the side of a fish. They have that top fin right there, it's called the dorsal fin. All fish have that as well. And then on the females, you can see a very, very, very small little fin sometimes on the bottom. And then that would be towards the back side of them. Excellent, we have a great question from Jordan, age nine, who wants to know why do the males carry the babies? That is a great, great, great question. So, you see, uh, how do I explain this about one to <laughs> Seahorses belong to a specific family of fish uh, along with pipefish. And those two types of fish are the types of fish that where the males are the ones to carry their babies. It's a, just a special adaptation that they've grown over the years. Not exactly sure why it happened, but it seems to be working out for them. And Excellent. Kathy Ann is wondering how often do they have babies? So it's in the wild, it's very seasonal. It depends on water temperature and things like that. In Florida, they may have babies year round. Uh, if they're up here and they're having babies, it's really only gonna be in the summertime. In this tank, we keep it fairly warm, right around 72, 73 degrees. Uh, and they'll have babies well, a couple of, once every few months or so for us here at the zoo, but it really depends on where they're living in the ocean. Excellent. Ryan, age 12, is wondering what are they eating? That's a great question. So they're actually eating two different things. The one floating right in front of this guy right there that's in the middle of your screen, that's called a brine shrimp. And we also will feed them mysis shrimp, which is just a little bit bigger. It's two of their favorite things. That's because seahorses in the wild, they will eat all sorts of small little crustaceans, small little shrimps, plankton, copepods, things like that. And they just want that really, really nice small food to fit into those long, long sucky mouths. Excellent. Kaiden, age nine, is wondering, do they make any sounds to talk to each other? Uh, they can kind of make, they don't make sounds really that are very, very loud, but when they eat, they do make a, like a snap, but they talk more with colors. So they'll get darker, lighter, they posture up, and they'll show themselves in different ways, and then that's how they're kind of going to communicate with each other. Excellent. Rebecca, age eight, a good friend of ours, is wondering, are they endangered? So these specific seahorses are not endangered, but there are a lot of seahorses out there that are in some trouble and they do need help. Um, these guys are mostly just collected for the pet trade, so people really like them as pets, but they do have babies really well in tanks, so you can kind of get those babies from there. Um, and they're also connect, uh, collected for traditional medicines. People dry them out powder them up and do all sorts of different stuff for them. And then they also will collect them for decorations. People, some people really like them dried up and they like to hang them in their houses. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a little different. So they're not quite endangered, but they're definitely, there are some that are, and then there's others that are on their way to becoming endangered. Oh dear. Yes. Rebecca's also wondering what might eat a seahorse? Oh, they have a lot of predators. Uh, it really depends on where they're living. So seahorses have a pretty wide range as far as water depths go. They can be found within the first about 10, 15 feet, give or take. And then they can also go down as far as 200 feet. The big thing that they want is they want vegetation where there's a lot of plants for them to hold on to, um, ropes, things like that. So if they're in the deeper open water, they might be even be eaten by a, a tuna. Things like that will swim by and kind of eat them up. Around here, uh, if they're in shallower water, it's gonna be other predatory fish like bluefish, things like that. So anything that has some teeth or wants to eat another fish, definitely have a go at a seahorse because it's easy. It's easy to catch them. They're, they may be fish, but they're very bad swimmers. Oh dear. That was a great answer. Colin, age six. I hope that answered your question about how diff how many different places do they live? All over the place, All it sounds place. like. So, yep. so from where we're at in Massachusetts, right, right around the Cape, so the bottom part of the Cape, they don't usually come up higher, but right around the bottom of the Cape, 
all the way down to southern Brazil. So if you guys can look it up on a map, it's a pretty, pretty far, far spread. Excellent. Ryan, age 12, is wondering what do we do with our baby seahorses here at the zoo? That's a great question, Ryan. So we actually try to raise as many of them as we possibly can here at the zoo. And some of the ones in this tank are actually already second generation. So they're seahorses that we have raised to adulthood and then been able to put them back into the big tank. Uh, oh. so we have a couple different tanks where we raise them up and we kind of go from there. Excellent. Kaiden, age 9, is asking if any of them are shy. Welcome back, Kaiden. If any of them are shy? Yeah. Uh, sometimes seahorses, I wouldn't really call them shy, but they can be a little bit more secluded. They'll kind of hang out behind the ropes and they don't come out as often. They're not as bold. Um, but shy, eh, it's hard to tell. I wouldn't really say call them shy, though. Okay. Jordan, age 9, is wondering how long does a seahorse live? So, usually about three are this species so there is a lot of different types of seahorses guys so we're talking about line seahorses uh so this particular type about three to five ish years give or take excellent and if you remember if you tuned in last week we can tell that from that otolith that ear bone that we can age fish with so we got similar questions like that last week and the otolith we can count the rings on these guys like a tree oh my goodness very cool. Now, our dear friend Melody, hi Melody, we miss you, is wondering if males carry the eggs in all types of seahorses. Yep, pretty much all the sea, well, pretty much all the seahorses, the males are going to be the ones carrying the eggs. They have that pouch. That's what kind of puts them in that family along with the pipefish. They're the ones that are going to be holding on to those babies. Excellent. And then the cool thing about baby seahorses is they don't come out like other baby fish where they're, they look very different from the grown ups and they almost have to go through a big transformation like a caterpillar. Um, they actually come out like little miniature baby seahorses. Teeny tiny, but exactly like the adults. That is a great lead into Samantha, age 10's question, but how many babies do they have? So on average, they can have anywhere between 200 to 500 eggs that the female will put, deposit over to the male. Maybe not all of them will hatch, but it's gonna be somewhere in that range. So two to 500. Fantastic. Ryan, age 12, is asking, do they live with any other fish in this exhibit? So in this exhibit, yes, they actually live with neon gobies, which is that guy that guy right on the side right there. There's a couple of those Let's see if we can zoom in uh, popping bit. around a little bit. Yep, that guy right there. And they also, it's not a fish, but they share it with hermit crabs, which are the ones that you guys find we have the another beach. Hermit crab up here? And then we also Ooh. have a pipe fish that we share the exhibit with here too, which is our cool cousin of the seahorses. Do we so see a both crab these guys coming? are in the same group and the hermit crab if you guys wanted to see them they are super cool they actually oh, provide yeah. cleanup for us so they'll go through the bottom and eat any of the fish that of uh, fish excuse me they eat any of the food that the seahorses leave behind so the hermit crabs are super cool like he's doing right now he's doing a great job of cleaning some stuff up you see him shoveling that sand in and he's picking up any food that's in there excellent so thank you for helping me out mr hermit crab <laughs> Colin, age six, is wondering, do they ever get aggressive? So they can get pushy with each other. Um, they're definitely not going to be aggressive towards us because we are way too big for that kind of nonsense. But towards each other, especially if there's a, a girl that's looking to hand her eggs over, the boys will show off in front of her. They kind of grab each other and get different colors. And they say they're the biggest and they're the best so that she will uh, want to give her eggs to him. Because who doesn't want the best dad to take care of their babies, right? Absolutely. Now, I might have a bit of a lag here, but I don't see any more questions. So are there any other really interesting things you want to tell us about our seahorse friends? Yeah, sure. So like I said, there's a couple different species of seahorses. This is just the one that lives right here um, in Massachusetts. From time to time, you'll see them popping up. Um, if you do zoom in on them, like I said, what's really cool is, especially this guy, because he's showing off pretty good, that opening right there, that's actually where the babies are going to come from. And that lines up perfectly right with where the female will give him the egg. So they'll actually swim right up in front of each other and hand those eggs over underwater. And they do that all without hands, which is super duper cool. That's very and the other cool thing about these guys is if you look at his mouth, see how it's super duper thin. He's actually giving us a good look of how he breathes. They're able to suck in pretty big food items with that mouth because they actually use almost like a vacuum pressure where they suck it in and then push the water out. He's gonna show us right now? Maybe, nope, I like <laughs> Where they suck it in and then they push the water out their gills and then the food gets stuck in their mouth. 
So it's actually called suction feeding. So it's a really, really cool adaptation that a lot of fish have, but the seahorses do a really good job about it by sucking through that little straw. Excellent. Let's see if we've got any other questions here coming in. I apologize if we're at a lag and we're not answering all of them, but hopefully well, they'll come in soon. If you guys want to see, I'll put a little bit more food in there. Maybe we can get them to wake up a little bit more. Excellent. All right, so I'm gonna give you a nice view of this whole tank while Kyle goes back and puts in a little bit more food. You can see it's coming in right here. And as he said, a lot of that is gonna be brine shrimp. So if you look really closely, you can actually see that that is, that is meat. These are having a little meat snack. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's little brine shrimp and mysis shrimp. Very cool. I'm getting some down here too. It's very excited for breakfast. So seahorses don't really chase their food down very well. So when we feed them, we got to put a decent amount in the water so that it'll move around and they want to snap it right out of the water column. Sometimes they'll take it off the bottom too, but we really want it floating around as much as possible to give them a good opportunity to strike and suck up that food. Excellent. Kaiden age nine coming in with another great question. Do they play with each other? Not really. Um, these guys aren't going to be like your dog at home if it has a dog friend where they're romping around and playing around, things like that. They kind of just, they'll hold on to each other. That's because they like to hold on to anything they possibly can because, they, like I said before, they're pretty bad swimmers. Uh, but they're not going to start playing games with each other or things like that. They're more looking to try to not be eaten. That's a good goal. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> Jordan, age nine, is wondering how powerful is their tail? Ooh, so their tail is strong enough to... It's pretty strong. Uh, I've had them actually like hold on to my finger or if I try to take them off of something so I can get a good look at them or if the vet wants to take a look at them, uh, that tail will hold on pretty well. Um, it's nowhere near as strong as our finger, but it's definitely strong enough to hold, have these guys holding on if the water's moving kind of quickly and things like that. Excellent. I'm trying to find you guys ones that are eating, but like because you said, they're not going too far. Yeah, no, they don't, they don't move very far. Like I said, they kind of will wait for the food to come to them and we'll wait, kind of process it. So this female's actually been doing a pretty decent job of striking at food and eating. So you just be patient. She'll eat at something again. So she just swallowed her food right there. You kind of see her toss her head back. And what she's doing is she's trying to process it. It gets caught on her gill rakers and then she kind of swallows that food down. Excellent. Oh, another great question. What are those thorns on the top of their heads for? That's a great question. So this species of seahorse actually has a very large variety of what kind of, we call it decorations they can have on top of their heads. Those are actually filaments that kind of just help with camouflage. Sometimes they'll have them, sometimes they'll actually get rid of them. Uh, our guys, some of them seem to have some pretty nice ornamentation to them. It doesn't really serve much of a purpose besides that camouflage though. Excellent. All right, friends, if you have any last questions, now's the moment. Hopefully we can answer any of your burning questions about these Ooh. lovely seahorses. I don't know if you guys were able to hear that though too, but you can actually hear that snap when she swallows up that food. Oh, there we go. Exciting stuff. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining us again today for another BP Zoo to You virtual keeper chat. We hope you're having a lot of fun learning about all of our animals. We certainly miss having you here in person, but we love being able to connect with you through these wonderful videos. If you are enjoying them and you would like to send us a donation, please remember that Buttonwood Park Zoological Society is the nonprofit branch of the Buttonwood Park Zoo, and we get our funding through admissions and events, programs, all that good stuff. So certainly having the zoo closed is a bit of a hit. So if you'd like to leave us a donation, you can go to bpzoo.org. I will try to add a donate button to this here at the end. Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to do it before. And you can always text BPZoo20 to the number 41444. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll see you again tomorrow and have an excellent day. Thanks, guys.